So I want to start off and explain a little bit about myself and how I got into sign language and that kind of thing. So that was why I was curious how you guys, um, what you guys knew, if you guys knew people, that kind of thing. So my name is Courtney. I started signing when I was very young. My mom and my aunt took a sign language class together uh, way before she was even pregnant with me. And so she had learned some stuff. And so growing up, then she taught me finger spelling. She taught me a lot of like just little signs that you pick up like God and Lord and just house and just random little song, little signs like that. So that was exciting for me, and it was always just something that I really loved. And so as I got older, then in third grade, then I had my first actual sign language class that my mom taught me, and just learned more signs through that, and more finger spelling and things like that. Um, as I got older, then I would help out in the children's ministry, and I always loved being the one to volunteer to make up motions to go with the songs. So even though I didn't know the actual signs, then I was like, in love with like getting to do something or like learn whatever they were doing and that kind of thing. So that was really fun for me too. Um, as I got older, when I was 15 in high school, then uh, one of my teachers uh, at the school, then she had a husband who was deaf and she taught a sign language class. So she taught one for the elementary age group that, was my, that my brother was in and then she taught one for the high schoolers. And so mainly this class was just vocabulary. I learned a lot of great words and that really helped me out now because I know a whole bunch of words in, words in sign language. But the bummer part was is that when I actually met my first deaf person, then I could have said rock, dog, tree, God, and a whole bunch of other really great words, but I had no idea to actually initiate a conversation and eventually learn how are you and things like that that help more with the conversing part of it. So uh, that was really cool for me when I was 15 just to be able to take that class and like learn that kind of thing. And one of the, the coolest parts for me is that at the very end of that class, then she taught us how to sign a song. She taught us shout to the Lord. And so for me, then I was like, man, this is so cool. I love worship and just being able to sing like with it and everything. And then on top of that, to be able to sign. And so I was like, man, this is so awesome. And so I actually, at that time when I was 15, I didn't know anyone who was deaf. And I was just like wanting to keep up all my skills. And my mom's like, you should sign with the songs. Just, you know, the words that you know and that kind of thing. Just use those, fill it in just with what you know. And so I started doing it and that kind of thing. And I didn't know a whole bunch, I couldn't translate a whole song and do a bunch of stuff like that, but I like was able to keep up with it. And so um, when I was 19, I was going to, um, and when he did, then I ended up being the interpreter because I was friends with him. So I had also started interpreting at the church. Uh, the, the bulletin had said that we'll have interpreting, and their thing was that if we say, if we advertise that we're gonna have interpreting, we have to have an interpreter, which makes complete sense. So one morning we get there and everything, and we're waiting, and the worship starts, and there are none of the interpreters there. They only had a couple at that time, but there were none. And so my mom's like, you should go up and like interpret. And I was like, no, you, you don't take that stuff upon yourself. You have to like be asked. And she's like, you stand here every week. You know all of the songs you sign it. Just go stand up on stage and do the same thing. And so I was like, after like much debate, was <laughs> sign up on stage and eventually started signing. So I eventually went up and started signing. And then the interpreters had had car trouble and that kind of thing. So, they got there and they were like, oh great, I'm so glad that we have someone else who can sign and we'll just add you to the rotation. So I started doing that and then the main interpreter ended up hurting her back and was able to sign, so I took over um, interpreting for the church. So that was really how I got my start in interpreting. And then from there, then I uh, visited four different classes and the chapel and just all the things there. Um, I really enjoyed that a lot. So as I continued on then my senior year of college, then I ended up going and working at the California School for the Deaf. So I was an aide. I started off in preschool classrooms with these cute little like three and four year olds who are signing and had a much better grasp of the language than I did, but they were really sweet and it was really fun. And so um, I eventually moved to elementary and spent most of my time in the fifth grade classroom where I grew a lot and just really fell in love with teaching. So my goal had been to become a teacher in that kind of thing. And when I graduated, then I kind of felt that the Lord was calling me to do something else. And so I was praying about what to do. And God ended up leading me to go to Bible college. So I went for one semester and God ended up calling me to go. And it was a really awesome experience and I totally grew closer to the Lord. Uh, but it was kind of a funny thing as well. So the cool part about that was is that during um, one of the church services, they had seen me signing during worship because I loved doing that. And so um, they come up and ask me, they're like, this, there's this lady in the church and her daughter really wants to learn sign language. Would you be willing to teach her? So I was like, yeah, that, I think that would be really cool. I would enjoy that a lot. And so as I went through, then we set up the plans and everything. And so she's like, actually, you know what? Would it, would it be okay if her friend came as well? And I was like, yeah, that would be cool. Like, then you get the two of them. They can talk and everything. So 
that day I'm really excited. I have like my little plan and everything. So this girl and her, her friend show up with uh, the girl's brother and the other girl's brother and sister. So I start with five. And so I was like, this is really cool. Like they were a great group of kids. I really loved it. And so I started teaching them and they were just like fascinated. They loved it. They were, uh, the youngest was five and the oldest was 13 at that time. So it was quite an age range, but it was really fun. So we did all these games and taught them signs and they were just taking off with it. So I send them home and I talk to the parents and they're like, oh, that was so fun and everything. So I go down to dinner and I get a call and they're like, hey, um, so we have these neighbor kids and there's five of them. Would it be okay if they came next week? So by the end of the four months when I left, then I had 12 kids in my class and I taught them all to sign. And at the very end, then we were doing an Easter program and they were doing a song that was half hula and half signing. And through that, they had to sit there and wait and I was in the quiet. And so as they're sitting there waiting, then I felt so bad and I was like, man, they have to like sit here and wait through this. I can't even like go hang out with them and like, you know, make sure they're good and everything. They just have to like sit there and be quiet. And so I'm watching them there and they're kind of sitting there and they're like whispering to each other and they're looking at the PowerPoint because they were like practicing with PowerPoint as well. And so they're, I keep like watching them and like, are, what are they doing? And so they're talking and then, and they keep looking at each other and like thinking about it and stuff. And so I'm like, what are they doing? You know? And so all of a sudden then I see them and they start signing it. They signed the entire rest of the song and like honestly it was like exactly the way that I would have translated it and everything and I was just so like, oh my gosh, you're like, you guys are signing, you're doing it like all on your own, like I taught you some of the signs, you know it and you guys discussed how to interpret and it was just such a blessing for me to see how God was able to use just them doing that and everything. So that was my first experience with teaching which got me really excited about teaching ASL. So, Anyway, when I came back, then all of my kids really missed me, and we'd have like a good going away party and that kind of thing, and I really missed them. And so I went on, I went on and decided I would make some videos of myself signing. I would go through and reteach them um, their numbers, their letters. I would like, I don't know, add additional songs that they were interested in. And so I started posting things on YouTube for them. So if you go back to my early stuff, then I'm telling the kids hi, and I'm you know, um, dedicating their favorite song to them, that kind of thing. So that was how I really got my start on YouTube. And so then people started being like, wow, this is really great. I'm so excited that there's stuff on YouTube. You teach it really good and everything. So that was why I started adding more and more stuff onto YouTube. And so um, right now I am, so I ended up graduating Bible college and finishing that and then going to school for interpreting. And this semester then I started interpreting a juvenile hall and I teach a girls Bible study and sometimes lead worship and a couple of other things that I can't remember right now. So I keep pretty busy, so when I get behind on the videos, you guys will understand why. But I'm really